It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. I am not prepared to give this opportunity up without a fight. I think I'm a good enough cook to win this. This is one tough competition. Won't be happy if, I, if anything else, really, I want to win the competition. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. In this one-hour episode, these six contestants will all compete for the last remaining quarter-final place. The winner will then be up against three other exceptional heat winners. Our quarter-finalist is Chris. Congratulations. <laughs> is Stephen. Congratulations. Jennifer. Well done. <laughs> but first, it's the quick elimination test. These guys believe they're good. They want to find out just how good they really are. They want to match their cookery talents against the best amateurs in the country. Today, I would just love to see a really beautiful, delicious, tasty plate of food served with confidence. Fifty minutes, one very good plate of food, off you go. The contestants have to invent and cook a dish from any of today's ingredients, which include pork medallions, chorizo, puff pastry, peaches, tinned butter beans, sweet potato, quail's eggs, whole grain mustard and savoy cabbage. Mum of two, Zoe, likes to put her own stamp on classic recipes. I do like spicing things up. I can take a, a recipe, but I can't help but change it and do my own thing to it. What are you cooking for us? You have a spicy chorizo tart. I've got onions, chorizo, peaches mm. and soy sauce. Mm -hmm. That's going to work. You'll taste it later. I love your confidence, <laughs> Zoe. Trainee accountant Alice is torn between her new career and a love of cooking. You're working very hard now to become a qualified accountant. Yep. There's no way you're going to give that up and go and work in the catering industry. Yes, I'm, I'm absolutely determined to. Working in an office has made me actually realise concretely what I want to do. I'm here because I want to win. I'm absolutely passionate about cooking. My dream would be to have and run a restaurant. of three, Sean, is inspired by his love of Indian food. I like strong flavours. With a love of the strong flavours, I always like to see how far I can push, push that boat out, if you like. Uh, how good are you, Sean? Given the right ingredients, I think I can give you a, a cracking dish. Because that's the important thing. Today, you don't have the spices nope. that are important for a curry. What are we going to get, then, Sean? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. You are halfway. Thirty-three-year-old Rashna has never felt fulfilled by her career as a solicitor. Why didn't you enter a career that you loved? There is a lot of pressure on Asian children to go into a more academic career. So, to be honest with you, with mum and dad, you know, becoming a full-time chef wasn't an option. I was given engineering, medicine or law. I'm at a turning point in my life, really, where I've done the career thing, I've had my children, Now's my time to pursue my passions, and cooking is, is definitely that. 27-year-old Gareth regrets not taking the chance to be a chef 11 years ago. I went down the route of nearly joining the Royal Air Force to become a chef. I was accepted and decided against it, so you learn by mistakes. The job I'm in now, it pays bills, and that's all. I need something I'm happy in. Why now do you want to change your life, Gareth? Well, I've got a baby on the way. So I want everything, you know, to be perfect for when the little one comes along. Twenty-two-year-old student Caroline loves to cook, but has to keep an eye on her bank balance. 
I'm living on a budget, I have to feed myself so I can't afford to buy a lot of very fancy ingredients and do very fancy cooking. I just cook food so I can eat. What are you studying at university? I'm studying Russian at university at the moment. I've just finished my second year. Ultimately, I would like to go to Russia and open a restaurant there which specialising in English food. Ladies and gentlemen, you have only two minutes. Time is up. Step away from your bench, please. Dad-to-be Gareth's future as a chef rests on spicy bean stew with quail's eggs and garlic bread. I love the flavour combinations. It's rich with tomatoes. You have been brave enough and good enough to give a big chilli kick. Well seasoned, rich with that paprika and chilli that's come out of the uh, chorizo sausage. I think, Gareth, you've done pretty well. Mum of two, Zoe, has made a chorizo tart with cheese, soy sauce and peaches. You must admit, that is a highly, highly unusual combination. Yes. I've, I've got my doubts here, Zoe. I've seriously, seriously got my doubts. The idea of taking a peach, chorizo and a soy sauce is just wrong. Will trainee accountant Alice's pork with creamy mustard sauce and sauté potatoes be her ticket to a new career? I really enjoy the textures of the crispy potato and it's soft on the inside. I think your pork is cooked very, very well indeed. That sauce is slightly acidic. Mm. Nicely cooked pork, still lovely and moist, really well seasoned on the outside. I love the potatoes. Then you've got this lovely velvety cream sauce. Actually, I really like it. Dad of three, Sean, has made medallions of pork, garlic mash, cabbage and cream and mustard sauce. I think your mashed potato needs more seasoning in it. I think your sauce also needs a bit more oomph in it. Your pork's slightly overcooked and it's gone a bit dry and cardboardy. I don't hate it, but I don't... It doesn't make my heart thump. I really like the textures. I really like the smooth mash. I really like the creamy sauce. I really like the crunch of the cabbage. I really like the softness of the pork. Student Caroline has made sweet potato and chorizo soup. I really like the flavour of it. My issue is the texture. Mm. I feel like it needs to be smoother. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I like chorizo. I, I love that paprika flavour, but I've got a paprika bowl of soup that ends with a sweet flavour. I don't get it. Solicitor Rashner's culinary dreams rest on pancakes with peach compote and cinnamon butter. I'm really concerned about two great big slabs of butter. That is just solid butter. Mm. And so is that. Mm. Oh, that's fantastic. We have got the lovely, juicy flavour of sweet peach with cinnamon. I like that. Good. I love the compote of the peaches. I love the flavour of the cinnamon that goes through. I think the butter's a bit of a mistake, but um, great. We're going to have a mug of tea and a chat. You're going to have a long wait, I fear. Off you go. We've got some amateurs who are actually really, really good cooks. We've also had one dish today that is probably the worst dish of the whole competition. 
anybody who believes that a paprika flavoured pork sausage with cheese and a peach go together does not belong in this competition. There's no hope for Zoe. Oh, it just went so wrong. I think just the overall being there, the pressure, and I just either lost my mind. Gareth's actually my first choice. That stew was well made, then dropping those little quail's eggs on top, brilliant. Tomato rich, strong with paprika, the beans were giving it real body, and it had a big whack of chilli in it as well. I mean, he packed some big flavour in there. He's in. Ratchna, I really, really enjoyed the flavour of that compote. I then found myself searching to find out why this woman stuck a load of butter on the top. The butter probably was um, a mistake. Perhaps the amount of it could have been greatly reduced. It probably should have melted over the top of the hot pancakes. It didn't. You got to, come on. She's a good cook. And I've got to be fair, I love the flavour. So, Ratchner in. Caroline? There's an issue here in the fact that actually you didn't like the bowl of soup. I quite like the idea of that spiciness against the sweetness. I found the texture a bit weird with the sweet potato. You see, you didn't like Caroline's soup texturally. I didn't like the flavour of Caroline's soup. So Caroline's out, Zoe's out, Gareth is in, Ratchner's in. The simple fact is this is between Alice and Sean. I, I, I prefer Sean. And texturally, he got it all right. He cooked it all well. I don't agree with you on Sean. The pork was a bit dry, the sauce didn't have enough oomph, I like the texture of the mash and the cabbage together, but in this round, right now, I think that Sean is a bit off the mark. Be great to get through, great to come back tomorrow, cook what I like to cook, and show them that I can really work with some pretty complex flavours. Alice cooked lovely lumps of pork, really well seasoned, with a great reduced velvety sauce. I think it was really good. That sauce was slightly acidic and it needs something like the cabbage, which is exactly what Sean gave us. It means so much to me to get through to the next round. I've put so much work into this. I will really want to go further in this competition. Both of them cooked pork and mustard cream sauce. Which one was the better? Great cooking today, some really, really good cooking, and that's made our decision quite tough. Gareth, you're staying with us, my friend. Congratulations. Caroline. And Zoe, I'm afraid you are leaving us, ladies. Ratchner. You're staying as well, Ratchner. Alice or Sean? Alice, congratulations. I'm sorry, Sean. Cheers. I'm feeling fantastic. I'm so pleased to be through. It was such a close competition today um, that I feel really lucky to be here. Very happy. I'm feeling really relieved and just kind of quite surprised, actually. Elated. Um, I've got through to the next round. I'm excited, I'm happy to go through, and I just want to go all the way. Three great cooks now about to find out what it's like in a professional kitchen. I hope they love it. I think they will. I really think these three are going to get something from this experience. Day two, and the contestants arrive at Las Iguanas, a Latin American restaurant situated on London's busy South Bank. With 200 expected for lunch, head chef Abs Patil wastes no time in telling the contestants what he expects. If I see the plates are not good enough, it will not go in the restaurant. Is it all right? Yes, yes chef. Customers, they expect their food on the table as soon as possible. This is a fast-paced restaurant. We're cooking the food fast, putting on the table, so can customers eat their food and go in and out fast. It's 12 o'clock and the orders start flying in. Alice, you got one chicken fajita, please? Yes, yeah, Chef. Alice is looking after the fajita section. 
she'll have to juggle cooking the chicken, duck and lamb fillings to order. And she's already under pressure. Now, where's the chicken feta? You can't serve that feta. Alice, you can't serve that feta. It gets burnt. I need one fresh feta. Use that one. Throw that one. Come on, wake up! Rashna, you got two zimzim to cook. Rashna's also got several orders on the go. She's responsible for the traditional Brazilian chicken and fish dishes. But with so much going on, she's panicking. I need your food, Rashna. Come on. One pescado con coco, how long? Rashna, I'm talking to you. Pescado con coco, three minutes. You cannot sell that fish. No? It's waste. Broken. You cannot sell that one. This is crazy. Get it. Yes, Chef. One chicken grill with cassava fries. Yes, Chef. You got lamb medium rare? Yes, with Chef. Bravat. Okay. Thank you, Chef. Gareth is in charge of grilling the steak, chicken, and lamb. And with the restaurant almost full, he's swamped by orders. Gareth, how long for your sirloin? 10 seconds, Chef. One medium sirloin, Chef, with salad. Gareth, Gareth. Yes, hey, come here, please. Come here. What's wrong with the plate? Tell me what's wrong with the plate. A bit messy, Chef. See, then make it right, Chef. Make yes, it chef. right. No come on, let's well, Chef. His first dish isn't presented to chef standard, and he has to replate. One pescado con coco, chef. Thank you, Rashna. It's halfway through service, and there's no let up. After a slow start, Rashna's now found her feet. How long is it going to be, Rashna? Everything's ready to go. One chicken zim zim, chef. It's looking good, Rashna. One salmon macaca plating up now. Nice one, Rashna. It's looking good, it's looking good. I've got another Zim Zim coming now. Alice, fire the fajita. But Alice is still overcooking her fajitas. Can't serve it, because it's burnt. OK. <sighs> but I want that duck fajita properly, yeah? OK. I don't want any complaint. One medium sirloin, oh. chef, for salad. Looking good, chef. Gareth's put his presentation problems behind him and is turning out perfect dishes. Just coming now, chef. Tight to Bramus. It's looking good, Gareth. Is your steak ready, chef? Half a minute, Chef. Chef. Gareth, that's look great. After two hectic hours, lunch service finally comes to an end. Well done, we made it. Nice one. So how have the three amateurs coped in their first professional kitchen? Rashna initially, when she started, I think she messed up a few things. She was struggling. But at the end, somehow she managed to get it better, and the final product was really good. That was a manic place, absolutely manic. Alice is the one who struggled a lot. Two, three times, I have to reject the food, but finally, she got it right. I feel sad that I made mistakes. Um, I'm annoyed that I made a couple of mistakes. Gareth impressed me. His work was good. Among three of them, he was the best one. To get your food out and the chef to say it's good food, that's all you want in life, really. Brilliant. It's now straight back to MasterChef HQ for the final challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, your two courses. One hour, one quarter final place up for grabs. Let's go. Yesterday, dad-to-be Gareth wowed the judges with his spicy bean stew and excelled in the pro kitchen. Can his two courses of pork belly and cherry clafouti pudding make it three in a row? Pork, onions, mashed potato yep. and clafouti. I've not actually done a cherry one before, so it's going to be uh, different. You decided not to sign up for the Air Force. That's right. And uh, not to take up cooking. Now you've got your chance. Absolutely, yes. It's something I've wanted to do for a very long time now. How are you going to win this competition, Gareth? By creating good hearty meals with brilliant taste um, and for you two to really enjoy them. Gareth is making clafouti, a classic French dessert. That is technically difficult. Can he pull that dessert off? Trainee accountant Alice scraped through the invention test and had a disastrous restaurant round. Can she make up for it with her two technically demanding dishes? Master Chef is about finding a professional chef and being able to keep control in a professional kitchen. Yes. How was your day today? I had a couple of dishes that were sent back. But you're going to redeem that little mistake? I am, yes. I am doing a pan-seared fillet of venison with beetroot puree. And then for the next course, we're having a raspberry and almond tart and clotted cream. 
this whole changed your life, Alice. Why now? I'm almost about to get my Chartered Accountancy qualification. I've got the naive theory that restaurants fail either because you've got a foodie that knows nothing about business or a businessman that knows nothing about food. So I'm hoping that I've got a little bit of both. Venison and beetroot, lovely classic combination. I like the idea of it. Actually, it sounds like a really good dish. You're halfway. You have 30 minutes left. After impressing the judges yesterday with her pancakes and performing well in the restaurant, can Solicitor Rashner's two courses now secure her the quarter-final place? Asian-style food from you today. Yeah, I like fresh, clean flavours um, with a hint of the exotic. What are the two dishes that are going to make you win? Sea bass with a Thai noodle and carrot salad and a hot chocolate pudding with a cardamom cream. We have what we call death by chocolate corner. Right. <laughs> where all the, the carcasses of those who've tried to cook chocolate puddings now sit I rotting. Only, I can only cross my fingers and hope that I get it right on the day. John, I love a chocolate pudding any time of day. I've seen so many collapse on MasterChef. You have five minutes. That's it, time's up. has cooked a classic menu of fillet of venison, beetroot puree, shallot tartin, mashed potato and red wine sauce, followed by raspberry and almond tart with clotted cream. What I've got there is that rich, deep, very, very good sauce against that very well-cooked, rich meat. The soft shallots coming through the pastry also very, very good indeed. I don't pick up potato in that. I'm not surprised. I'm not quite sure what the beetroot's doing there. I don't think it can hold up against the strong, strong flavours. Beautifully cooked, very rich, with a lovely, sweet, but yet almost bitter red wine reduced sauce. Love all that, actually. Really, really like it. Bring in your pudding. You've got the flavours right. Sweetness, buttery, almost almond marzipan, sharp but sweet raspberry coming through. There's no way near enough cream. More, more cream, please. I think it's pretty good. The pastry is really buttery. The raspberries are sharp inside. I like the flavour of those against the, the almonds. Your raspberry sauce is really raspberry rich. You could be a good little cook. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think your chances are now? I put my everything into it. I feel like I've given it everything I could. I don't know. We'll wait and see. Dad-to-be Gareth's dream of a career as a chef rests on roast pork belly, olive oil mash, baby onions and cider sauce followed by a cherry clafouti pudding with kirsch cream. I like the flavour of those shallots against the pork. I feel the pork needs to be cooked longer. It needs to be softer. It's still a bit hard for a belly of pork. The flavour of the sauce has sort of disappeared because there's not very much of it on the plate. It needs to be cooked longer. This, this fat needs to melt right yeah. down. And you've overworked that potato and it's going a little bit gluey. Yeah. I don't believe it. I expected more from you. So did I. The batter is just starting to curdle a little bit. Um, it needs more fruit in there. Gareth, you've worked really hard today. I know we have. Um, have you blown your chances? Um, I'd like to say no, but on that display, who knows? 
Solicitor Rashner's hoping to impress with pan-fried sea bass and Thai carrot and noodle salad, followed by chocolate pudding with cardamom cream. Your fish is cooked beautifully. It's lovely and soft and lovely and sweet. The noodles, for me, need more oomph. Yeah. You say Southeast Asian to me, and I expect salty, and I expect heat as well. I was expecting more. Bring in the pudding. It's light, it's got lovely chocolate flavour through it, it's got a little moist centre on it. Your chocolate pudding is very, very, very good indeed. It's nicely made, it's light. Strong, strong cardamom in that cream. Do you think now that you're going to make it through? It would be immensely disappointing to leave at this stage. You guys have done your job, we've now got to do ours. It's judging time, guys. Off you go. We have three decent cooks. We have to choose one for the next round. In my mind, on the display of the work, we've got to knock Gareth out right now. The pork was not cooked enough. It was tough and a bit chewy. His cider sauce, gone. That mashed potato was overworked and gluey. Cherry clafouti. Well, I had a stone in mine. I think he's got the heart and he's got the soul. He hasn't got the knowledge or the ability yet. I've made a few childish errors, really, in the kitchen. Um, but, uh, yeah, slightly disappointed. I know I could have done a lot better. Ratchner's sea bass was cooked really beautifully, absolutely perfectly cooked. The noodles didn't quite have the chilli kick they needed, but actually it wasn't a bad dish. And she made a really, really lovely, lovely little chocolate pudding. It was elegant, it was simple, it looked beautiful. It was very, very good. I would love to have the opportunity to go all the way and... Um and take the title of Master Chef. Alice, I'd say I think that venison and that sauce I thought was absolutely stunning. Beautifully cooked venison, beautiful sauce. The girl obviously knows how to make good sauces, and the little shallot tatatan were very, very good. I think the flavours in a raspberry tart were good as well. But we put our guys in professional kitchens because we want to see if they can cope. Alice didn't cope. There are question marks over Alice, but there's no question mark over the girl's ability to flavour and to cook meat. I would be so excited to be um, invited back for the quarterfinal. I really hope to still be in the competition. Who's it going to be? Finalist. Alice. Congratulations. Uh, Gutted, uh, in a word. I'm feeling very, very disappointed with myself. Uh, no, I could have done a lot better. I'm definitely going to carry on cooking. This certainly isn't going to stop my enthusiasm in the kitchen, not one bit. I'm just absolutely ecstatic to be going through to the next stage of this competition. It's my dream. I'm brilliant. Alice's place is secure for now, but in the morning, she'll be back for the next daunting stage. It's 8am on quarter final day. And these four heat winners have returned to battle for a coveted place in the semi-finals. Everything now just gets harder and harder and harder. We get to see four great cooks go head to head and fight it out for one semi-final place. Hugely pressurised, fantastic food on offer. Definitely think I'm in with a good shot of, of winning this now. Now it's giving me a taste of what it actually feels like. I want to go further in the competition. I'm absolutely convinced that I could win MasterChef. Stiff competition out there for uh, whether I could win or not. We'll see. Only the absolute best of these will make a semi-finalist. I mean sublime, fault-free food. Today, we may have the winner of MasterChef amongst them.
First up is 29-year-old experimental cook Stephen. In his heat, he impressed with his imaginative crayfish, asparagus and basil stack. Wow, they are powerful flavors. Right. It's actually quite exciting. But his pork and mussel combination was not a hit. All flavours are recognised. Yeah. Potato, pork, yeah, yeah. crackling and mussel. Completely different texture. Not for me. Stephen is an experimental cook, dropping lots of flavours, lots of ingredients together to create his own cuisine. There is no denying the guy's talent and his knowledge, but some of his creations are a little bit... weird. I still believe in myself 100%, thinking that, yes, I can go forward and win this competition. Management consultant and mother of two, Jennifer, dreams of having her own family bistro. In her heat, she wowed the judges with her refined food and intense flavours. I love the thing of that mayonnaise sitting with that fish, so it now becomes quite creamy, and that's where the sauce is coming from. That's really nice, Jennifer. I am seriously excited about Jennifer. Real subtlety in her flavours, real elegance in her presentation. That lady is cooking in an extremely modern and quite unique style. But she has to believe in herself and the food that she serves. She has to stick to her guns. I would really, really like to win MasterChef. I've got plenty of my life left and I think I can um, change its path. Trainee accountant Alice showcased her love of techniques and processes with her venison, shallot tartin, beetroot puree and mashed potato. Beautifully cooked, very rich, with a lovely sweet but yet almost bitter red wine reduced sauce. Really, really like it. But she added unnecessary ingredients. Not quite sure what the beetroot's doing there. I don't think it can hold up. She makes very, very good sauces. She cooks meat to absolute perfection. There's bags and bags of potential in there, John. She loves classic cooking, and as long as she does that today, she'll be absolutely fine. I feel great to be in the MasterChef quarterfinal. I've got to really perform in this round to get through. 24-year-old Christopher has only been cooking for three years, but his natural ability to produce great flavour combinations shone through with his sea bass with chorizo and his summer pudding. This is good-looking, well-composed, thought-about food. It's very, very good indeed. Big pile of summer goodness and uh, I'll quite happily stick my face. Chris believes in his cooking simple food when actually he's cooking majestic food. That young man has an absolutely exceptional natural palate, but he has to prove to us that he has the confidence to go through this competition. To be in the quarterfinal is amazing. Now it's kind of just down to me. I think I've got a really good chance to go through to the semi-final, and that'd be amazing if I could. I love quarterfinals. They're exciting. It's great food. We have stunning amateur cooks in that kitchen today. Who must have that semi-final place? It's 10 o'clock, and the contestants are back at MasterChef HQ. They're about to be tested on their food knowledge and on their commitment. After this, one of them will be sent home. This is ingredient recognition test. We just want our contestants to see if they can identify these ingredients. I've got here five cheeses. Lots of cuisines around the world make their own very distinct cheeses. I have five cuts of lamb, starting right from the front of the lamb, going all the way to the back. There are three famous blue cheeses in the world. This is one of them, the very English Stilton. Got a rich, creamy texture, not as strong in flavour as other blue cheeses. Hello, Jennifer. Nice to see you again. This is ingredient recognition. Okay. Could you tell me what that is, please? Some sort of Danish blue. Right. I think it's Stilton. Shropshire blue. And so that was Stilton. Christopher is off to a good start. But will he be able to convince John and Greg that he has the drive to go further? If I went out because my food wasn't good enough, then that's fair enough. But to go out because I haven't taught myself up well, then that I'd be really disappointed with that. 
food kind of just started off as being a bit of a hobby, something I took an interest in, and it's just kind of grown into an absolute obsession now. I you know, think about food, read about it, the whole concept of cooking now and doing that as a profession as well just kind of you know, means everything. It's something that I really, really want to do. Thanks very much, Chris. Cheers. Thanks, well guys. This one is the shoulder, and it has lots of muscle in there. It needs long, slow cooking. It is a shoulder and definitely not a leg. Do you know what that is? It's not a leg lamb, it's, it's prey on it. It's his thigh. What's that? That's the shoulder. Shoulder? Do you know what that is? Leg. <laughs> Jennifer has failed to identify the shoulder of lamb. She now needs to persuade John and Greg that she has the commitment to make it through MasterChef. I'd love to cook this afternoon because I think I've concentrated hard on the three courses and I think they'll really enjoy what I'm making and I hope I can convince them. 18 months ago, well, I started cooking more and I started doing things, more traditional things, making chutneys, making breads and growing more vegetables and all of those things and realised that's what I actually love doing. And so basically, I still work as a consultant at the moment. I can make a lot of money doing that, and that's what I'm good at. But I actually love cooking, and that's where I want to take my career now. And I'm in a fortunate position that I can do that. Thank you very much. That's OK. Thanks. They should all get this. This is brie. It's soft, it's got that easily identifiable white outside, almost nutty softness with its flavour. Easy. What's that? I'm pretty sure that's brie. 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 It's brie. Alice has recognised all the ingredients. She now needs to articulate how determined she is to succeed. I'm feeling really nervous at the moment. If I can't cook this afternoon, I'll be gutted. I'll feel like I've let myself down in some way. Food is what I've been wanting to do all my life. I've decided what I want for my dinner by 10 o'clock in the morning. Running a restaurant would just be fantastic. And with MasterChef, I've got this real opportunity to do it and to do it properly. And I want to be involved in this process and to win. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. is the neck fillet. Only the neck fillet has this amount of fat around the outside of it, full of flavour, milky soft, slow cooked or cooked very, very fast indeed. What's that? And that's a neck fillet. That's a neck fillet. The tenderloin. It's a uh, fillet or like a sort of tenderloin of uh, the lamb. Stephen hasn't done well in the ingredients test. But can he persuade John and Greg that he has the passion and drive to be a MasterChef semi-finalist? I practice these dishes, I believe in these dishes, and I want to go further in this competition, so I just hope they actually give me the chance. This means the absolute world to me. I think about food, I obsess about food, I go out and meet friends, I talk about food. I, I just, it just, it's taken over my world. All I want to do is just work in the kitchen. I would like to work for a top chef and just bu bust whatever I need to bust to actually get to where, where I want to get to. Thanks very much, Stephen. We've got four great cooks. We know they're great cooks. We've put them here already. But the fact remains, only three of them will cook this afternoon. I'd like to plead the case of young Chris. Yeah. I think he held his own in the ingredients test. And uh, I just admire the young fella's honesty. Yeah. And we both love his food. And like you, like the guy's honesty. So there we go, Chris stays. Alice did very, very well in the ingredients recognition. She is determined, she thinks about food, she's got inspiration. I have no problem with Alice at all. I, I think Alex, Alice should be cooking. Brilliant. Absolutely. So Alice is in, that gives us uh, Chris in and Alice in. This means we have to decide between Stephen and Jennifer. What do you think of Stephen? Part of me is concerned with Stephen's uh, inability to guess the ingredients in the ingredients test, but uh, absolutely blown away by the guy's passion and uh, commitment to the cause. Well, I really like the guy's passion. I know the guy can cook, that's why he's here. And I'm not necessarily convinced by Jennifer's want to be in this competition. She has not given me any sort of feeling that she actually really wants to do this. But Jennifer's food wowed us. I mean, really wowed us. We thought it was different 
clever, thought provoking. She definitely did better than Stephen in the ingredients recognition. Yeah, but you know, Stephen's here for a reason as well. When it was an invention test and there were just those ingredients together, he created a really delicious plate of food. This is difficult because obviously one of you doesn't get a chance to cook now. But we've made our decision. Sorry, Jennifer. Okay. Thanks, Jennifer. Good luck. I don't think I did very well on the ingredients test and um, perhaps my passion for cooking didn't come through in the passion test. I will go ahead and do something in cooking in the future. Oh, nice one. Congratulations. Thank you, mate. You three are now battling out for a place in the semi-finals. You guys now have to cook your socks off. Let's cook. The three remaining contestants now have an hour and 20 minutes to produce a three-course meal that they've designed themselves. The standards expected at this stage are at a much higher level. So far in the competition, 24-year-old Christopher has shown an ability to produce perfect flavour combinations from only a few ingredients. I'd very much like to know what your three dishes are today, Chris. OK, so for starter, I'm doing a pea and mint soup with a seared scallop. And for main, I have a lamb's liver served with mashed potato. And for pudding, I've got, I'm going to attempt a chocolate fondant, so... You must be aware of the amount of failed chocolate fondant. Oh, well, you know, you're going on for the semi-final here. I think I need to kind of step it up. Do we see the essence of Chris the Cook in the food? It's minimal ingredients. I like that. I know what flavours go well together, so I'm not going to mess about them too much. It stood you in quite good stead so far, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to change that, that formula anyway. Nothing wrong with that boy's menu at all. I would happily eat every single mouthful. Please, please don't let that chocolate fondant be Chris's undoing. Just 50 minutes left. Trainee accountant Alice is pulling out all the stops, cooking a technically demanding three-course menu. Alice, how are you feeling right now? Nervous, um, a bit rushed, but I'm, I'm enjoying myself. What are your three dishes? Sweet potato soup with roasted cashew nuts, and then roast pork belly with scallops, and then chocolate bread and butter pudding with a white chocolate mousse and a mango and passion fruit salsa. What do you think is special about you which is going to hurtle you into the semi-final? I've got a strong foundation in classic techniques and methods, which I think is important for every cook to start with. Um, now I've kind of I've got that basis and I'm experimenting and moving on slightly. Alice, can you win? I could do. Get that pork belly right, those scallops beautifully cooked, absolutely fantastic. We've got chocolate butter mud pudding. I like the idea of that. But with the white chocolate mousse and with mango and passion fruit, is it deep and it rich or is it tropical? Which one is it gonna be? Just 20 minutes left. In past rounds, experimental cook Stephen has shown off his creativity with some unusual combinations. Stephen, how are you getting on? Uh, not too bad, quite stressed, quite busy. What are you three called? Uh, starters is a mushroom soup with parmesan crisps and basil oil. Main course, I'm doing a calf's liver with mustard potato, uh, masala sauce and crisp pancetta. Uh, and then for dessert, caramel, uh, banana and amaretto compote. What, what is it about this, do you think, that makes it special or makes you special? I want to keep things simple and I want the flavours to work, but at the same time, I want to try and fit in a few techniques in there so I can actually prove I should be allowed to go through to semi-final. He 
is he going to have time to do the detail to make that food look fantastic? I don't quite believe he's playing it as simple as he says he is. Any moment I expect to find something a little bit crazy from him. Three minutes. Get stuff on plates now. Thirty seconds. Do it now. That's it. Time's up. To win a place in the semi-final, Christopher has cooked a starter of pea and mint soup with seared scallop. In there you have that lovely, sweet, rich pea. Wonderful, soft, salty scallop. And then the whack of mint. The flavours are delicious and it's very, very good indeed. Thank you. Very good. I'd order it, I'd eat it, I'd order another one next time I went in. Can he continue to win praise with his pan-fried lamb's liver with pancetta and horseradish mash? I have a terrible feeling that this is going to need something to make it a bit wetter. Yeah. Yeah, there was a little issue with the kind of reduction-y sauce. It, it just it, reduced. It, it is a reduction in the true sense of the word. Yeah. The flavour, though, of that liver against the sage and the onions, the bacon, is lovely. The issue, as I suspected, is it's a bit dry. They are such good flavours. Meaty, rich, deep liver. Sage, bacon, smooth mashed potato. It's a little too dry, but very well seasoned. Finally, will Christopher's gamble of cooking a chocolate and amaretto fondant dusted with cinnamon pay off? Perfectly moist in the middle. What is my biggest surprise and my joy is that I didn't expect that cinnamon. And it's sugary, it's sweet. The cinnamon just adds that little bit to the top of it. It is really, really tasty. Good. Mmm. Soft on the inside. It's got a very light crust on the outside. But it's also the amaretto in there that is making it grown up. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. How do you feel? I'm really happy with the, with the pudding. A little bit disappointed with the main, but you know, I've tried my best and I think it's good effort. For her starter, Alice has cooked sweet potato and roast cashew nut soup. I love the colour of the soup. It's actually the colours of autumn, but, uh, but I love it. But it actually develops in flavour, herby, spicy, the longer it stays in your palate. I think it's a very good bowl of soup. I like that a lot. Very intensely flavoured, more ginger and coconutty flavoured soup with that sort of toasted cashew on top. I really like it. I really like it. Will her roast pork belly with scallops, peas and carrots be as big a success? Am I supposed to eat this all together? Totally. Go for it. Load up your fork. Good for you. You've got very, very strong flavours there. Pea, onion, pork, carrot. I have no scallop at all. I don't even pick up the scallop as a texture. Every single component part of your dish is beautifully cooked and really, really well seasoned. And I had a flash of this salty scallop before that salty, crisp rind of that pork kicked in and took over but I do like it a lot. How will John and Greg find the combination of dark chocolate bread and butter pudding, white chocolate mousse, and mango and passion fruit salsa? I love, 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 love your chocolate bread and butter pudding. In comes tropical fruit, white, sugary, chocolate. 
Individually, I think they are very, very well made. Together, I think they collide with each other. One half of my mouth is tasting white chocolate and mango. The other half is taking the, the dark chocolate and the custard that goes in that rich bread and butter pudding. And the two come together like the Clash of the Titans. Do you think that you may be trying a little bit too hard? I'm trying to demonstrate my skill, um, and I think pro I probably am trying too hard. You, you would rather, we said, could you give us your best eight dishes, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would, definitely, <laughs> yeah. For his starter, Stephen has cooked wild mushroom and parmesan soup with basil oil and parmesan crisps. Wow. There are some seriously big flavours in there. That basil oil on top is really rich, and then the saltiness of that parmesan cheese, which really gives you a big kick. And what you actually get last is the smokiness of those mushrooms. Very, very good flavours. I don't enjoy the texture. It's too thick. I want it to be a soup. For his main, he's cooked pan-fried calf's liver with mustard mash, masala sauce, pancetta and caramelised onion. God, you've got big flavour, boy, aren't you? You really pack full flavour in there because the onion is beautifully sweet, your sauce is intense, your spinach is cooked beautifully, your mashed potato is full of mustard and lovely and smooth, and what I don't get to taste is the liver. But you know, I really love the other flavours. I love the combinations. It is about the other flavours, it's not about the liver. It's sweet, sweet onion, it's meaty sauce, it's mustard in the mash. Lovely textures, big, big flavours. It's beautifully, beautifully cooked, presented in a very, very modern style. Can Stephen continue to impress with his caramel banana and amaretto compote? Caramel, banana, cream, chocolate and digestive biscuit. Each flavour comes together as a dessert. <clears throat> I so want to love it, I so want to say to you it's great, but it's far too sweet for me. Yeah. Mm. I love the flavours of caramel, of the sweet banana, and the texture of the cream, and hints of chocolate. Yeah, I just want to take a running jump into it. It's, uh, it's a lovely looking thing. Would you like to go further in this competition? I just look at this, and there's a few things I like about it. At the same time, I know I can do better, and I will do it better if I go through the next round, because I want it more than I've ever wanted anything before. I honestly would have no problem at all putting any one of you three through to a semi-final. We can't do that, obviously. We do have judging to do. Off you go. Thank you. Today, we have had some great, great food. To see the pure love and joy of cooking is exhilarating. Now, Stephen, we said to Stephen, you've got to pare it down a bit. Today, his food was well presented. It was clean, it was crisp, it had bags of flavour, certain things not quite right, but I tell you what, I'm, I'm blown away by what Stephen did with his first two courses. Dessert, I've got, a, I've got a very, very sweet tooth. Caramel, banana, cream, right up my alley. If I got knocked out at this stage, I mean, I would be... Uh, I, mean, I would be gutted. Anything less than actually winning the competition, I'd feel quite gutted about. I thought Alice's soup just looked great. I think it was well-balanced, well-thought-out, well-made. Main course, everything cooked very well indeed. But I lost the scallop. Dessert, there you have three separate desserts on a plate. She's desperately trying to show us lots and lots of processes. And I think when she does that, she ruins the whole. I think the case of the dessert, I totally agree. But I do think her other two courses actually are pretty good. The idea of that pork and scallop, classically, is quite a good one. And I, I sort of applaud her for her thought process in trying to do something as adventurous. And it was so close. I've given it absolutely everything today. I've submitted what I think are my best three dishes and I cooked them really well. I think I've definitely done my best.
Chris has a very, very good palate. He did pea soup with a scallop. Simple in its presentation, no frivolity, ticked every single box. But his main course was dry. It should have been moist, it should have been delicious, and it wasn't quite there. It, it made his main course flawed, but I still have to say, I mean, they're absolutely bang on the right flavours. Chris's dessert of that chocolate fondant with the amaretto inside and then the aspired splash of cinnamon on top, that is clever cooking. And that was what his food was like today. It was quite evocative. If I went through, I'd, that would be amazing. I've got a lot more to give. Just hope I get the opportunity to, you know, show that I, I can do pretty good food. Oh, crikey, John, it's a long time since I've seen, you know, three people cook like this. Chris has a natural understanding of flavour and texture, but you've got really inventive, creative food in Stephen. You know, he's trying to push the boundaries. Alice is also pushing the boundaries, but she's pushing it with flavour and flavour combinations. All three of these guys are so driven, and of course, that's what this competition is all about. But who has the biggest gift? <laughs> so hard to choose one from these three. I have three enormously talented cooks in front of me. Absolute pleasure to be part of this today. Our decision has been really tough, but we have made that decision. Our semi-finalist. is Chris. Congratulations. No way. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Chris. Don't worry, you're joking. I can't believe it, no way. I am very gutted because I felt I could have done better and I think if I'd have cooked my abilities, I could have gone through and I should have gone through. But I'm a bad loser, I know that. I'm disappointed but I still love cooking and um, hopefully one day I will have my own restaurant. Very few people in this country could cook food like he cooked today. I challenge them. Every single plate of food he's given me has left me wanting more. The fella is an exceptional talent. It's going to take a while to sink in, but I'm ecstatic. Yeah, semi-final. Um, it's unbelievable. Thank you. Semi finalist. <laughs> I know I can do it now, definitely. I've got this far, so I really want to go all the way, so. <laughs> Christopher will return for the semi finals, but next time we're back with six new contestants all battling it out for the title of MasterChef. Chef.